The technique of calling something fake news if you disagree with it is not new. In this final segment of my final lecture for our cognitive psychology class, I'm going to tell you about two very important studies that explains what people do with findings that they don't believe. The study I'm going to tell you about now was about something called the hostile media effect. And in this study, two groups of students from Stanford University were brought into the lab. One group of students had very pro-Israeli beliefs, and the other group of students had very pro-Palestinian beliefs. They come into the lab and they watch a video that talked about the conflicts between the Israelis and the Palestinians. And the video, like in the previous study, described the conflict in a fair and balanced way. There were just as many pro-Israeli arguments as there were pro-Palestinian arguments. There were just as many criticisms of the Palestinian positions as there were criticisms of the Israeli positions. The video was designed to be perfectly balanced and equated. So what happens? Well, this result was interesting because both sides agreed. Sort of, both sides agreed that the video was biased against their side. In other words, the very fact that those videos presented arguments that were not consistent with people's beliefs was enough for those people to reject the videos as biased. Fake news. When confronted with information that challenges our beliefs, do we consider that information and reconsider our beliefs? No. Instead, we dismiss the information, say it's from a hostile source. Classic. This is not new from the last few years. This study was done in 1985. And let me tell you, politicians have been using this effect to manipulate people for years. So think about what we're going through right now in terms of the hostile media effect. When confronted by information that challenges your beliefs, you dismiss the information source. So if somebody believes that wearing a mask is a sign of tyranny, it's a sign of their individual rights being stamped out, and you explain to them maybe the data from the CDC or research from labs from other countries, they're just going to dismiss it because the conclusions are inconsistent with their beliefs. And conversely, you could take someone who thinks that masks are the most important thing in the world and present them with evidence that suggests, well, masks aren't enough and here are the conditions in which they won't work and they'll dismiss them because it's inconsistent with their beliefs. We need to be a whole lot more humble about our beliefs and a whole lot more sensitive to the data. I'm gonna end this class with this one study from 1954 by Al Hastor. Classic, and for any of you who are sports fans, you're gonna love this. You're gonna get it completely. This study was done with undergraduates at Princeton University and Dartmouth University, two Ivy League schools that annually have a football game against each other, okay? So Princeton and Dartmouth play each other in this football game. The study is super easy. Princeton people, pro Princeton football players, you watch the game and you count the number of violations or rule infractions that your team and the other team made. Okay? Then the other team does the same thing. So you get pro Princeton people counting the number of rule infractions that the Princeton players and the Dartmouth players made. And then you have Dartmouth students, pro Dartmouth people, doing the same thing, counting the number of infractions that Princeton football players made and the number of infractions that Dartmouth football players made. And what do you find? Students from both universities see the other team commit more infractions than their team committed. I can't tell you how, many, how often I have yelled at referees for calling penalties against my team because I didn't see the penalties and for not calling penalties against the other team because I saw them, it's the same thing. Now, the study is simple, but the conclusion, the conclusion is powerful and here it is. 
There is no such thing as a game that exists out there in its own right, which people merely observe. For the thing is not the same for different people, whether the thing is a football game, a presidential candidate, communism, or spinach. Think about that. They're arguing that there's no such thing as objective reality, not cognitively speaking, that if there is, we can't get anywhere near it. There is no such thing as a game existing out there in its own right, which people merely observe. In other words, we cannot be objective observers. We can't stop ourselves from having our beliefs influence how we see the world, how we understand the world, how we act in the world. And as a result, we do some pretty wacky things. So what do we do going forward? Well, if we all took it a little easier on the beliefs, we might see the world a different way. And I hope you consider doing that. Guys, it's been a hell of a semester and you've stuck through it and I'm really proud of you. It's the hardest semester in my 30 years of teaching. I know it's been really hard on you. We have students in this class who have COVID. We have students in this class who've experienced deaths, multiple deaths of loved ones. We have frontline workers. We have people who become homeless. It's just been a really hard semester, but you hung in there and that perseverance and grit will serve you well your entire life. So thank you for your time and your patience and your consideration during one of the most tumultuous times in American history. Take care.